Do CPU cores matter in gaming? I just always assumed that they did, but is that actually true? I don't know, but today we're gonna find out. Stay tuned. So I was trolling around the internet the other day looking for a video idea and I came across a method of disabling CPU cores in Windows. I never even knew this was possible and at the same time didn't know why it would be necessary, but it still gave me a great idea. I've compared processors in the past and how they affect gaming. However, even if you compare processors with different core counts, you're also dealing with different IPCs, a different amount of cache sometimes, different operating frequencies and boost algorithms, and ultimately there's a lot of differences that will affect gaming performance, not just the core count. So, what if you could use the same processor, but the only difference being different core counts? So, that's what I did. But before we get into that, we've got to pay some bills. So check out today's sponsor. Is your copy of Windows 10 unactivated? Well, it doesn't have to be, because with today's sponsor, VIP SCD Key, you can get a valid Windows 10 license for under $20. Stop dealing with that stupid watermark on the desktop, the valid license for Windows 10. Also, with an activated copy of Windows 10, you can upgrade to Windows 11 for free. Just go to the link in the description below and pick up a valid Windows 10 license key. During checkout, use the code CYBERCPU for a 25% discount. Once you have your key, go to your activation settings in Windows 10 and click on the link that says Change Product Key. Enter the product key you just purchased and hit Activate. Now you don't have to deal with that stupid watermark that come with running an unactivated copy of Windows 10. Now, on with the video. Now I'm doing these tests on a Ryzen 5 5600. This is a six core processor with hyper threading, which gives you 12 logical cores. So you know what, let's jump on the computer real quick and I'll show you how I disabled cores on this CPU so that you can repeat these tests at home because quite honestly, <laughs> my results were not what I expected. Let me show you how to do it. Okay, so I did all these tests from Windows 10, but this should work on Windows 11 as well. But it's really simple to do. All you have to do is click on your start menu, type msconfig, and you'll see right here the system configuration app. Just go ahead and open that up, click on boot, and then go down to advanced options right here. And then right here you can see where it says number of processors. What this is going to change is the number of logical processors, not the number of actual cores. And as you can see here, I have a total of 12 that I can do. So if I wanted to make this a quad core eight thread processor, I would change it to eight and then it would essentially disable two of my CPU cores. And then once you do all the testing and you want to go back, what you'll notice is when you come back in here, it won't let you choose a higher number than what you've chosen before. So if you set this to two and then restart your computer, then it will only give you one and two as an option. If you ever want to change back to your original setting, just go ahead and uncheck this, hit OK, and then restart your computer. And it should go on to the way it was before. So as you can see, it's not difficult disabling CPU cores. Also, I wasn't kidding about wanting you guys to try this at home as well. If you have the time and you're a little curious, I'd love to have more people check my results and see if they come to something similar as I came to. Now, speaking of my results, I tested five different games from different eras in hopes to get the best sample size that I could. The system I'm using to test this on, like I said before, is a Ryzen 5 5600. This system has 32 gigs of RAM and is running an EVGA RTX 3060. Both CPU and GPU are water-cooled and all these tests are done in Windows 10. I also ran all of these tests with native resolution of my ultra-wide, which is 3440 by 1440. I I also ran these tests at 1080p and got the same results, so I'm only going to be covering the results that I got from my native resolution. Also, if the game supported DLSS, I turned it on because DLSS tends to be more processor intensive and since we were testing the CPU, I thought that would make the tests a little bit more relevant. Also, since there's a lot of comparison here, I'm going to be comparing each change in thread count to the original 6 core 12 thread that the CPU has, rather than comparing different core counts to different core counts. If we did that, this video would take hours. I tested all of these games at 6 cores with 12 threads, 4 cores with 8 threads, 2 cores with 4 threads, and also 1 core with 2 threads. 
The first game I looked at was Black Mesa. This is a remake of Half-Life 1 using the Half-Life 2 engine. It's a pretty old game and I don't think the Half-Life 2 engine is optimized for tons of cores, but I could be wrong on that. Our initial test at 6 cores and 12 threads gave us 171.9 average FPS with 110.5 FPS 1% low. However, once dropping the CPU down to 4 cores and 8 threads, we got an average FPS of 175.6. That's a 2.1% improvement in frame rate with a similar 1% low of 110.9. This kind of blew my mind a little bit. Here's the thing. At this point in the test, I thought that maybe the way I was disabling cores wasn't working the way I thought it was. While at 2.1% improvement, it's kind of within margin of error, it's still an improvement with two less cores and four less threads. So I fired up Ryzen Master while running Prime95 so I could get 100% CPU usage and see what the CCX was doing. I had a theory that reducing the CPU cores by thread count was actually giving me six full threads, and two hyper-threaded threads. This would explain the discrepancy. However, in Ryzen Master, as you can see right here with Prime95 running on full tilt, two of the cores in the CCX were completely asleep. So I was getting a true four core and eight thread result. So moving along then, I tested Black Mesa with two cores and four threads. With this test, I got 173.2 average FPS with a 109.9 1% low. While I did lose about a frame in the 1% low, but that's still a 0.8% improvement over six cores and 12 threads. At this point, my results were just bizarre and totally unexpected. So then I decided to test it at a single core with two threads. Originally, I wasn't gonna do a single core test, but because of these results, I decided to add it. And what I got was 129.4 average FPS with a 66.8 FPS 1% low. Finally, I hindered the performance of Black Mesa, but only by 28.2%. However, I did cut the 1% low in almost half, and it was very noticeable during gameplay. So, moving along, the next game I tested was GTA 5. It's kind of a tradition I have to include this test in pretty much every video that I do, but I'm glad I did. With 6 cores and 12 threads, we got 114.6 average FPS and an 81.7 FPS 1% low. Once lowering our core count to 4 cores and 8 threads, we got 118.1 average FPS. That's a 3% boost in FPS with 2 less cores. What's worse is that we got an 85.5 FPS 1% low. That's a 4.5% improvement in our 1% low. So then I lowered the core count to two cores and four threads, and I got an average FPS of 106.2. That's a drop of 7.6%. I also got a 73.8 FPS 1% low. So it seems like in GTA 5, the 1% low is hindered the most at two cores with a drop of 10.2%. Then I tested GTA 5 on a single core and two threads. This made the game almost unplayable. We did an average FPS of 61.1, which is a 60.9% decrease in performance. But what was even worse is we got a 2.5 FPS 1% low. And yes, it was very noticeable during gameplay. I'm truly saddened to report that because of this 1% low, many pedestrians gave up their life for this test. The next game I tried was Counter-Strike 2. I just want to take a second to say that I miss CSGO. I'm sure there's way more positives with Counter-Strike 2, but it's missing most of the maps from CSGO. If they would simply put back the missing maps, I would probably be happy with the upgrade, but I digress. With six cores and 12 threads, Counter-Strike 2 got an average FPS of 161.6 and a 1% low of 87.4. Once lowering the thread count to four cores and eight threads, I got an average FPS of 163.3, which is a 1% boost in performance. However, I did get a 70.2 FPS 1% low, which is a 21.8% drop in the 1% low. Once dropping the CPU to two cores and four threads, I got an average FPS of 154.3, which is a 4.6% drop in performance from 12 threads. 
However, I did get an 82.7 FPS 1% low, which is actually an increase from eight threads, but a 5.5% decrease from 12 threads. So then I dropped it down to a single core and got 103 FPS. That's a 44.3% drop in average frame rate. But what was worse is that I got a 9.6 FPS 1% low, which is 160% drop in the 1% low. And as with the other tests, it was very noticeable during gameplay. Luckily, Counter-Strike doesn't have any pedestrians to worry about. But it seems like the higher core count does help Counter-Strike 2 provide a smoother and more consistent frame rate as we can see with the 1% low. The next game I looked at was Red Dead Redemption 2. This is the first game that I tested that really needs system specs to run well. So I was hoping for the best. <laughs> Actually, I was just hoping for results that made sense at this point. With 6 cores and 12 threads, I got an average FPS of 79.4. Once dropping the core count down to 4 cores and 8 threads, I got an average FPS of 77.1. This is the first 8 thread test that I actually lost performance in. I mean, it was only 2.2% loss in average frame rate, but it was better than a higher frame rate, right? I also got 58.5 FPS 1% low, which is a 10.5% down from the 65 FPS 1% low that I got with 12 threads. So once dropping the core count down to two cores and four threads, I got an average FPS of 55.1 and a 1% low of 40.6. Now, this is what I expected from the beginning. At two cores, we lost 36.1% average FPS and 46.2% of our 1% low. Now, I did attempt a single core test on Red Dead Redemption 2, and unfortunately, the game gave me this error here, saying that a single core processor doesn't meet the system requirements to play the game. So unfortunately, I didn't get performance numbers for a single core, but we can assume that they were really bad since the dual core test was 55 FPS. The next game I tested was Cyberpunk 2077. I just have to say real quick, before we get into the numbers on Cyberpunk, that whatever they did in the last update has insanely improved the performance of this game. At 3440 by 1440, I was lucky to get a barely playable FPS. I typically could only play this game at 1080p, but it's running pretty good now. In fact, my initial test of 6 cores and 12 threads got an average FPS of 72.3 with a 1% low of 58.4. Of course, this is with ray tracing disabled because ray tracing is primarily GPU dependent and I didn't want to lower the CPU usage. Once lowering the thread count to 4 cores and 8 threads, I got an average FPS of 74. That's a 2.3% improvement and right back to the bizarre results we were getting before. However, I did get a 55.1 FPS 1% low, which is an almost 6% drop in the 1% low. Once dropping the thread count to two cores and four threads, I got an average FPS of 71, which is a 1.8% drop in performance. I also got 46.1 FPS in my 1% low, which is a 24% drop in the 1% low. This was starting to get noticeable in gameplay. Now, as you can see from my results, I was a little confused at this point because it seemed like aside from Red Dead Redemption 2, in every other game, the performance went up by dropping the thread count to eight. Keep in mind, this is a Ryzen 5 5600, so it only has a single CCX processor. So the performance drop, while very slight, can't be explained through the, you know, the ineffectiveness of communicating between multiple CCXs. Now, the only possible explanation that I can come up with is that if you take a look at this screenshot here, you can see that my third core is my dominant core in this CCX. So maybe by limiting the numbers of cores, it forces more threads to run through core three, making it slightly more efficient. And when I lose performance, when I'm only at four threads, as you can see with this screenshot, my dominant core three is asleep. 
To be honest with you, that's the only explanation that I can come up with. If you guys have a better theory, then make sure to mention them in the comments below. I think ultimately, games are simply not optimized for multiple cores. So maybe by limiting the number of cores, forcing more threads to go through my dominant core, it's slightly helping performance. However, once we got down to single or dual core performance, that went away completely. In fact, a single core, it went away quite abruptly. So then, does core count matter in gaming? Well, yes, and at the same time, no. I think it really depends on what games you're playing. Unfortunately, I couldn't test every game on the market, and even my sample size might not be the best answer for this question fully. In fact, it seems like my sweet spot was four cores and eight threads. It's kind of bizarre on a six core processor. However, I did consistently see a better 1% low while using all six cores. So even though my average frame rate drops slightly with six cores, I do have better frame timing, which should lead to smoother and more consistent frame rates, even if it was just slightly lower. But with that said, six core processors are the most popular gaming processors on the market. Yes, there are CPUs with many more cores, but when it comes to bang for your buck, the six core processors are the ones I typically recommend and the ones I run myself. And you know what? This may also be a result of me running an RTX 3060. Maybe if I was running a 3070 or even a 3080, the core count would make more difference. That's one of the reasons why I'd like you guys to run these tests at home yourself and see if you get similar results as I do. So, make sure if you're watching this video to check the comments below. I think this discussion might be a pretty good one. And I'm sure there's many people that are going to respond with how I could have done these tests better. And if you think there is a better way, then make sure you mention it in the comments below. But, if you want to skip all of this noise and you just want a better way to increase gaming performance that doesn't include disabling cores, then check out this video where I show you how you can increase your gaming performance by simply upgrading your GPU drivers. It makes a lot more difference than you guys might think. As always, you guys have a great day.